The flying triangle. Everyone talks about it. Some people have learned it. And T-City has mastered it. T-City. Triangle City. That was a crazy variation right there. Let's talk about the variation you would actually use. Okay? So, you're tied up. Okay, necktie here. Brian wants to set it up. Show us your favorite setup. Boom. Break. Jump. Lock. And you grab the leg. If they bust out, arm lock transition. Boom. One more time. If this looks crazy to you, blame him. Okay, don't blame me. Brian wanted to show it. So, once again, from the necktie, control here. Look at what he's doing right now. Ultimately, for the triangle to happen, let's go to the guard, please. Lay down. For the triangle to happen, it's the exact same as the guard. All we gotta do is get rid of one arm. Boom. Okay? Now, how does Brian do that while we're standing? That's the question. Check it out. He first, basically, this hand is the one that's gonna be in the triangle, right? This one stays on his neck, because I'm committed to holding him. All he's gotta do is find out a way to get this hand down for one second so he can make his jump with that leg leading the way over my shoulder. As soon as it gets there, he's already lying down. Now, the way he likes to do it is if we're controlling here possibly, whenever his knee comes around, pushes it real quick. Same motion, as soon as he touches down, he's already jumping over the arm. Okay? Full speed. Yeah. He grabs onto my leg so I can't pick him up and slam him. Yeah, this is really good. And then he locks up the full triangle as soon as he can. Brian knows that the clock starts ticking once we have full triangle lockup. Until then, no deal. He's got to be here. So he's very committed to getting that real quick. Brian, what about, are you concerned about getting slammed in the process? Now, my concern is not getting slammed at all. Once I go on the neck, it's unexpected for someone to just jump on your neck. <laughs> yes, with their legs, right? No one expects for someone, a, a person to jump on your neck, correct? So it's natural, once you feel pressure on your neck, you want to feel the urge to get back up. Sure. By that time, my body's gonna be at least Right. One foot, two feet off the ground. By that time, I'm grabbing the leg, and there's no way the guy can slam me. Right. Think about that. Brian becomes a necklace. He becomes an extremely heavy necklace on my neck. So as soon as I feel that weight, I want to resist to kind of hold my posture. But by then, Brian's body is already doing this. Click, and his head is down low, and he's already anchoring on. So the fear of getting slammed, uh, or getting dropped, let's say, is, is minimized. Now, of course, this is kind of crazy move right here, of course. Jumping a flying triangle in a street fight situation has its risks. Because if you don't get to the leg quick enough, you get slammed. Okay? It's kind of a sportive move. Okay? It's kind of a family in the gym move. But Brian catches everyone in it. So it's Christmas, holiday season, little bonus gift for you guys. Okay? Whatever. Enjoy it. Don't use it in the streets because you might get your skull crashed. But uh, just to understand the mechanics of how the triangle is so dynamic and can be used in so many different situations. It's a, it's a fun one to play with and maybe surprise your friends in the gym with, okay? So one more time, here. Show us the wrist grab variation here. If Ryan can hold my wrist, also see how, now this is a little more obvious though, right? Because mm -hmm. I know now that Brian is trying to isolate one arm. What you do? Tell me. Tug here. What do you want to do? Tug back away. Hey. Go back again? That was nice. T-City, you got the tricks. So you might think you're going for an arm drag. They pull away, click. That's it. Yeah. So anything to get my hand to be distracted for one second. Now, there's two requirements. This hand is distracted and this hand is somewhere in the mix, right? If this hand is not here, there's no jumping because there's double underhooks. So as long as I'm committed up top somehow and Brian can distract or fake a little arm drag feed, boom, it's game over, boom. Okay? And you're jumping off of this leg, you're throwing your leg, boom. He's jumping, throwing it over my shoulder. As soon as it gets there, the second leg comes up. So like one, two. He drops and he gets a hold of the leg right away. And if you can't lock, cross your feet normal, cross your feet. If Brian can't lock the triangle, arm lock right away. Boom. So depending on how strong their posture is when you fall down, either arm lock direct from the guard or triangle. But get the lock up as soon as you can. Get the lock up as soon as you can. Any other details that you use that would be helpful for the world? Mm. Boom, boom, fake, jump, lock. The, and the idea that the Brian talked about how when you lock your legs, they want to resist initially is a very important principle to understand why it's safe to jump on someone's neck. Okay? In the streets, never safe, because you're literally upside down, skull, craziness, but uh, he uses it. Uh, he caught me yesterday in it, so I was like, ah, so angry, and I just course. had to, uh, I had to expose his secret to the world, okay? Mm -hmm. His few variations. Clear? Yeah. Clear? Try it a couple times. Just make sure the person that's supported, like if I jump a flying triangle on Brian right now, he can't even hold the heavy necklace. 
so I might get more injured. So I'd use this on Hedon, I'd use this on, you know, any animals, maybe. But against Brian, if I jump the triangle and he can't carry me, it might, I might land a little more aggressively than I would like to. So if you're gonna practice this, just make sure you have someone you can jump on who can bear your weight, okay? And uh, if you can't find that person, call me. I'll bear your weight, no problem. So we get a drink? Follow me real quick, come here. Check out the secret stash, we got the secret stash. Hold this. One, have you guys heard of one coconut water? When coconuts are out of season, or we don't have enough, we drink them all at the house, none left. One coconut. You can get them in any Whole Foods. They're bottled or packaged in Brazil. Here's how this works. They get the coconut from the tree. They pierce it with a little pipe. That pipe siphons the coconut directly, the, the water directly from the coconut into the packaging. This packaging has none of the chemicals that they have in plastic packaging. It's called Tetra Pak. Once they siphon it, they ship it to America from Brazil, from the homeland. Ship it to America. We store it in the fridge, we chill it. After class, between class, after flying triangles. Look, we open it. Coconut, which has never before been exposed to the world. We bring it into the world. Man, there's the real thing, and then there's one coconut. It's like, God, that close. Oh, any one natural experience. Whole Foods, you guys, I don't speak this passionately about many things, but one coconut deserves the passion. It deserves the juice because it has the coconut water straight from Brazil. Check it out. Go to Whole Foods. Try it. Let me know what you guys think. Why well, you got to drink when I drink? <laughs> Keep it real.